Hello, hello, it's Brandy Janae. Thank you so much for tuning in to my channel today. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my April bullet journal setup. Um, this setup was actually a collaboration that I will be doing with PH Doodling. She is a new friend that I found on YouTube and she is an amazing um, bullet journalist. And um, so I reached out to her for this collaboration. And then we decided to do the dog theme because she recently received a new puppy and it's so cute. Um, I do not have any pets because unfortunately I am allergic to all things with fur, <laughs> but I still think they're super cute. And I love the way her bullet journal spread turn out. And um, so please be sure to check the description box below so that you can see her layout as well on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, as you can see, I have already drawn out everything in my bullet journal for April. So it is all ready to go. And um, I'm super excited and I hope you guys enjoy the way that it turned out. For my journal this week, I will be using these Crayola Super Tips and there is one of the Tombow markers in there. I also have my Uniball Signo in white and then the Pigma Micron. I'll be using the 0 0.5. And then normally I do my um, bullet journals with stickers, but this time I'm going to be using stamps from Kindred Stamps. And um, they have these super cute little puppy stamps that I will be using. Um, and then I also will be using this ink pad that I received in the Archer and Olive sub box as well as the block that came with that. Um, and then I have some washi tapes that I'll use as well. Now, PH Doodling typically draws in her journal um, and she's very, very good at that. And you guys know that I typically use stickers because I'm more of a beginning bullet journalist. So this time I decided to use stamps instead of stickers. I could have made stickers, but I thought the stamps were cute and decided that it would be a little bit easier for me to use. Unfortunately, I was wrong about that, which you will see later. Um, but as you can see right now, I am working on my cover page and it says you, you're totally possum, which I thought was cute. And that's actually one of the sentiments that is in the stamps. So I thought that was just, you know, a cute little play on words. So this is the, I'm sorry, I said cover page, but I meant quote page. And then following the quote page, I will be doing my April cover page. So as you can see, I did decide to keep the quote page and the cover page with just my basic handwriting. Um, for the cover page for the word April, I did decide to go ahead and outline it just to give it a little bit of an extra effect. Um, but I'm not really one of those people that does all of the, you know, really super fancy lettering right now. So I just mostly write in my basic print. And as you can see for the letter L, for whatever reason, I made it super duper long. <laughs> so I thought that I could use the white gel pen to kind of erase it. Um, and as you can see, that didn't really work. So in a little bit, I will go back and use some white out to just get rid of that. And then of course, after all of the pages are finished, then I do go back and erase those pencil lines that you can see. Um, and then on the bottom, I just write a little calendar mostly for referencing because I do have every single monthly calendar already pre-written in um, the front of my journal. Um, just because I need, you know, the space to write a little bit more as far as my pre-planning is concerned. So I already have those up front. Um, I'm going to add a few little dog stamps, which are super cute. That one didn't stamp the best. So I just take my Pigma Micron and then go ahead and fill in those lines that maybe didn't stamp very well. And I totally was like a stamping rookie for this video for some reason. Um, even though I did a whole video on how to stamp in your bullet journal, when it came to this one, for whatever reason, I did not follow any of the rules <laughs> that I normally follow when I'm stamping. Um, I think because I assumed that because it the ink came from Archer and Olive, that it would be you know perfect for their journals. And like I alluded to earlier, I was wrong. I should have definitely tested it out. So again before you ever actually stamp on your final product you should do a test run on paper just to make sure that the ink does not smear or bleed or you know anything like that 
um, because I actually thought about completely just destroying all of these pages and started over. But then I decided, you know what? This is not a perfect book. It does not have to be perfect. It is for me. And the purpose is to keep my life organized and to keep my life, you know, in order and to know where I'm supposed to be and when I'm supposed to be there. So, you know, again, I just decided that it does not have to be, you know, this perfect book. And I just decided to go with it. So, yeah, sometimes we make mistakes and we just move on. <laughs> All right, so up next, um, I will be adding in my gratitude log. I absolutely love being able to sit down every day and write one thing that I am grateful for. It is so easy to get caught up in all of the things that you know you don't enjoy, but it's really nice to sit back and um, you know find one thing at least that you are grateful for. No matter how big it is or how small it is, it is really awesome to just find that thing. So I have it lined, um, obviously, one through 30. And I just write one quick line every single day of something that I'm grateful for. And then I decided to go ahead and use my gray Tombow marker to highlight the weekends um, just to give it some breaks in just white spacing. So um, just a nice, you know, gray highlight to add some color and again to signify that those are the weekends. And then I will also put a little dog stamp down at the bottom and add some color just to make it super cute and that'll be the end of the gratitude log Up next, we have the mood tracker and the habits tracker. I just started doing my moods, um, I believe last month. And I have to admit, I did not get necessarily every single day, but I did my best to, um, you know, keep track of all of my moods as well as my habits. So for my habits, I do track my Bible reading, exercise, liquids, um, my flossing, and then of course my vitamins. So on here, I do, um, you know, just do a simple tracker, especially where I just write down all of the 30 days. And, um, you know, I can kind of color in one of the bubbles for my habit tracking. And then for the mood, I like to track the, well, last time I only did three moods and I decided that wasn't enough. Um, so this time I'm going to try four. So I have happy, then I have one that's sad, then I have one of those kind of like me kind of days. And then of course, you know, those angry days. Um, and one of the things I did do in my last month for the moods is I kind of decided that, you know, I'm not really all of one thing all day. So um, you do kind of see that in some, you know, on some days I might have a little splotch of one color and then the rest of it might be another color. So I do kind of, uh, you know, kind of keep track of how my mood is going for the entire day versus just choosing one whole color to describe my day. So that might be kind of weird for some, but for me, it was just a little bit more accurate to how I'm feeling each and every single day. So again, for the habits, I go through and I write every single number one through 30 over and over and over, which is a very tedious task. I may make stickers for that for next month 
because I didn't really enjoy doing that. Sometimes I write the numbers and then sometimes I don't. This time I decided to do it. And then um, you'll see in a little bit for the mood tracker, I go ahead and use a combination of stamps from the dog stamps set um, just to, you know, kind of make the mood tracker cute. So I use some of the bows, I use some bones, and then I use some of the tennis balls. And then I go back on the bottom and add um, another one of the little puppy stamps in the house and add some grass and that is the end of this particular habit and mood tracker and i like it on one page i know some people do a two-page spread for that but i just for me i don't think it's necessary so that's why i kind of just keep it you know contained on one page All right, so up next we have the self-care bingo sheet, which I did um, for the first time last month, and I absolutely loved it. It is a great tracker for me to just make sure that I am doing something for myself. Um, you know, I think probably women in general have a tendency to take care of everyone, our children, our spouses, our you know, work, whatever the situation is. And we typically tend to neglect ourselves. So I have been making it a priority to, you know, just come up with things that I enjoy doing that I can go and enjoy either by myself or just with other girlfriends to encourage them to kind of get out of the house as well. Um, and last month it was really cool. So I was able to complete, um, what is it? Seven of the nine things. So that's not too bad. This month, my goal is to complete all nine. So anyway, I just did a grid. Um, it's a seven by seven grid. And I wrote self care bingo as the title on the top, added some washi and then put a couple dog stamps on the bottom and colored those in. And that is the end of this particular spread. For my next layout, I have the memories page and this will be the, well, I put one in March, but I didn't actually use it. <laughs> so this will be the first time that I'm actually using it. My husband purchased one of the HP sprockets for me for my birthday. So this spread was super easy to create. I'm just going to try to pick one picture for them um, each week of something that, you know, either he and I do together or just something that I really enjoyed and go ahead and put those in my journal just to kind of just serve as like a memory little book. So I literally just added a few stamps, did a little outline of where the pictures would go, wrote one, two, three, four in the boxes. And really that's the end of that. Um, because I noticed that there was some smearing in some of the other coloring, that's why I decided to go ahead and go back and then color in the puppies on the bottom after I completed that side, just to give the ink a little bit more time to dry. And um, you guys will again see in my flip through that it didn't matter. It still, 
it didn't go the way that I had anticipated for it to go. So anyway, I'm coloring in the little puppies um, and I think they're so, so, so cute. Um, I really, really enjoy this theme. Um, and I just had a good time coloring in the different puppies in different colors and, you know, just trying to change them up a little bit. Right, so here's the final flip through of my April bullet journal spread. Um, as you can see, here's the smearing that I was referring to earlier today, which made me super sad, but you know, life goes on. Um, it's really bad on this page and I could have taken it and redone it, but I just decided to just go with it. Um, that's life. <laughs> it's not always perfect. So overall, I am pleased with how everything turned out and the collaboration with PH Doodling was amazing. Be sure to again, check the description below so that you can can see her work. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. And as always, have a good day, friends. Goodbye.